Hello and how you doing everybody? Today we are going to take a look at Pinocchio, or I suppose I should say Robert Zemeckis Pinocchio. This is a live action remake of the classic animated Disney movie starring Tom Hanks, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Benjamin Ainsworth. And I could start off with a plot summary like I normally do, but do I really have to? It's Pinocchio. I mean, if you're not familiar with this story, clearly you had no childhood. And the original is pretty much the Disney movie. I mean, it's not the very first Snow White predates it, but it is arguably the most iconic. I mean, anytime you watch a Disney movie, whether it's in the theater or on DVD, on Disney+, Plus, what's the very first thing you hear? When you wish upon a star. I mean, that's basically the company's theme song and has been forever. And in addition to watching the remake, I went back and rewatched the original probably for the first time in at least 30 years. It has been a while. Uh, still holds up pretty well. I mean, I could nitpick a few things if you really want me to. I mean, the intro kind of drags a little bit with the introduction of all the various toys and clocks in Geppetto's workshop. Like, it's... It's a little slow paced, but I mean, that's really about it. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's damn near perfect. A great and memorable story, fantastic animation, really good songs, some of which I still have stuck in my head right now. It's, it's a classic. And that brings us to the modern remake. And I think anytime you are faced with a movie like this, the one question you have to ask is, does this remake justify its own existence. And honestly, I'm going to have to say no. It's not really trying to give us a different take on the original story. I mean, it pretty much hits all the same beats as the original. Puppet is brought to life by the Blue Fairy. It gets kidnapped by the fox and the cat and sent to a puppet show. And it escapes the puppet show and then goes to Pleasure Island, almost turns into a donkey, escapes Pleasure Island, gets swallowed by a whale, reunited with Geppetto, they escape the whale, the end. That hasn't changed. There's a few minor details they add here and there and a couple of new characters, but otherwise it's pretty much the exact same story. I don't think the transition to live action noticeably provides this movie any benefit. If anything, I think it actually hurts it. The CGI Pinocchio looks almost exactly like his hand-drawn counterpart, so much so that he really doesn't look like he belongs in this world. And the fox and the cat really don't look like they belong. In the original movie, with that hand-drawn animated environment, I found it much easier to believe that an anthropomorphic fox and cat could just be walking around among all these humans. In the live action world, boy, it does not look right. Uh, I mean, I know these characters are not Disney creations. They're part of the original story. They are, in a way, supposed to be there, but it's still just, they look out of place. Even Jiminy Cricket doesn't look right. His head has this weird two-layer thing going on. I swear it almost looks like he's wearing a luchador mask. Pinocchio, always listen to your conscience. Cero miedo. There are a few other minor changes they made compared to the original, some of which are not bad. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the intro in the original drags a little bit. Pacing in the intro for this one is much better. This version also suggests the reason Geppetto so desperately wants Pinocchio to become a real boy is because he lost his own son years back, which actually makes sense. Were I in Geppetto's position, I would probably wish for the Blue Fairy to bring my own son back to life instead of giving life to this puppet, but maybe that's beyond her powers. I don't know. I don't know the rules. And in the Pleasure Island scene, when Pinocchio starts turning into a donkey, his ears and his tail are actually made of wood, which I don't think was the case in the original, and I thought that was actually a clever touch. But sadly, most of the changes don't really benefit the movie, even if the changes aren't necessarily bad in and of themselves. Uh, the various clocks that Geppetto has in his workshop are almost all references to other Disney movies, which would have been fine if they just had one or two of them, but by the time we get to, like, the fifth one, I'm like, okay, I get it. Move on. They did keep most of the songs from the original. They also added a couple of new ones, which... 
Honestly, I could take or leave them. And speaking of songs, when singing When You Wish Upon a Star, both Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who does the voice of Jiminy Cricket, and Cynthia Erivo, who plays the Blue Fairy, sounded like they were straining a little bit to hit that high G. Maybe they should have dropped it down a step. And Tom Hanks is not the strongest singer either. He's a very talented guy. I love the Hanks, but singing is not one of his talents. Let's put it that way. The movie adds a new character named Fabiana, who is a puppeteer that Pinocchio meets after he goes to work for Stromboli. And honestly, this character didn't do a whole lot for me. No disrespect to Kian Lamaya, I hope I'm saying her name right, like her performance was fine, it's just the character didn't really amount to much except padding the runtime. And really, all the performances were great. I have no complaints about the acting at all. That was top notch. The bit with Honest John and Gideon was also padded out. Like, first they try to convince Pinocchio to go along with them, and initially he tells them to get stuffed and actually goes off to school. But then he gets to school and they kick him out because, silly puppet, schools are for kids. And then he decides to go back to Honest John and Gideon. And you could have cut that entire sequence out and lost nothing. They also made some significant changes to the Pleasure Island sequence. The coachman, who is played by Luke Evans, is this time around abducting boys and girls, so he's a more inclusive child slave peddler. Good for him, I guess. And the most noticeable change is the kids are not smoking and drinking anymore like they were in the original. There are no cigars or any tobacco products of any kind, and the beer has been replaced with root beer. They are very careful to spell out that it is root beer, there's no booze here. And I really think that was a mistake. I mean, I understand that they don't want to glamorize underage smoking and drinking. I get that. Totally get that. But that's not really what the original was doing. If anything, it was doing the opposite. It was showing you that if little boys start smoking and drinking, they're going to turn into jackasses. Literally. And even in the year of our Lord 2022, I think they could have kept that in there and still made it clear that little boys and girls smoking cigars and drinking beer is bad, actually. And without all of that, the only bad thing the kids are doing is rampant vandalism. There is a whole lot of kids breaking stuff. But they've been given permission to break all of the stuff that they're breaking. So is that really a bad thing? thing? I, I, I'm not buying it. Overall, Robert Zemeckis' Pinocchio is not a bad movie. It's perfectly fine. But it's a far cry from the original, and like I said, it really does not justify its own existence. And now that I've seen it, I understand why they decided not to release this to theaters and instead put it on Disney+. Plus. And if you have Disney+, Plus, I mean, it's not gonna cost you anything except a little under two hours of your time, but... The original is also on Disney+, Plus, and you might as well just watch that instead. And that's all I have to say about Pinocchio. Till next time, take care.